For most of us, food is something that we pick up at the supermarket or the fast food drive through although some might argue that fast food barely counts as food. Mass production of food has become common and has allowed most of us to eat like kings of the past. For example, for $5, I can pick up a large vegetarian pizza at most of the major chains. Just say I make $35 per hour working as a tutor. In order to pay for the $5 pizza, I only have to work for approximately 9 minutes. A garlic aioli and cheese pizza contains 4,546 kilojoules, 1,087 calories, which is over half my recommended daily intake. So for just 18 minutes of work per day, I can get all of my daily food requirement. What a time we live in, eh? Of course, we shouldn't just eat pizza every day, although having worked for one of the major chains, I know that some people do. But even if I went and bought all the food I need from the supermarket, I could easily live on $5 to $10 a day, for just food, not including other expenses of course. If I really pushed it and bought large bags of rice, beans and canned vegetables, I could probably live on $2 a day. What if, though, there were no supermarkets? What if some major worldwide disaster happened that wiped out most of humanity? How hard is it to grow our own food? In 2010, I tried just that at the local organic gardens. Here is the article that I wrote for their newsletter. Where do our peanuts come from? Some of us have only ever got our peanuts from the supermarket. It's quick, convenient, but most importantly, cheap. One of the major supermarket chains sells 200 gram salted roasted peanuts for about $1.20. Their peanut butter, which according to Fun Trivia contains approximately 850 peanuts, sells for about $2. Surely then, there can't be that much work involved in growing peanuts ourselves, can there? Let's grow peanuts. My first attempt at growing peanuts started in November 2010. It was a simple matter of buying some raw organic peanuts and placing them 30 centimeters or so apart, a few centimeters below the soil. Within a few weeks, we had our first peanut plants emerging. It was a joyous occasion, and I thought to myself, this isn't so hard. All it took was a little effort once a week, healing them and keeping the weeds at bay. All was well. Rain, weeds, floods. As many of us know, December 2010 and January 2011 brought much rain, probably the most Toowoomba has seen for many years. With all the rain, there was little chance to help the poor little peanuts. Their home had become a muddy pool. The weeds had come and taken over, and we could barely see the peanuts in the thicket. Early in January, a rare treat, a day without rain. I decided to go down and take out all the weeds, which took a solid couple of days of work. The peanuts were free again. However, soon after, the rain started up again and didn't stop. January 10 brought the worst floods Toowoomba has seen for many years. Torrents of water gushed through the gardens and presumably through the peanut patch. Their fate was uncertain. By this stage, I didn't really have much hope for the peanuts. Growth period. Finally, some less turbulent weather came into Toowoomba. The peanuts had a good chance to grow in the drier, warmer conditions. We decided to hill them some more and place some straw around them in order to keep their soil moist. They were already shooting out runners, root-like protuberances, which need loose soil to plant themselves in. The runners bend downwards and dig into the soil, at which time the tip of them start to enlarge and grow to form the actual peanut pod. Within each pod grows one to three kernels, the peanuts that we so desperately seek. Drying times and bloodied hands. By June 2011, the peanut bushes had started to die off. This meant it was time for harvest. We dug up all the plants, trying to keep as many of the peanut pods connected as possible. The next step was to place the bushes inverted in a dry area, in this case, inside the greenhouse in the fenced off area. With all the sunny winter days that we've been having recently, it only took one week for them to dry. They were now ready for shelling. I sat there in the warmth of the greenhouse, peeling the peanuts for about three hours. As I have a bit of a mathematical background, I calculated the rate at which I could shell them. In the first five minutes, I was averaging a bit over one kernel every five seconds, or 12 to 15 peanuts a minute, which works out to be about 800 an hour. At this rate, I thought, I would be able to get bucket loads of peanuts in just a few short hours. However, 
The seemingly simple tasks quickly took a toll on my hands. Peanut pods are very rough, and after opening hundreds of them, your fingertips quickly become inflamed. Using gloves was not an option, as it didn't provide the necessary sensitivity. Furthermore, not all the peanuts were usable. Many of them were rotten, while others didn't contain any kernels. I would estimate that only about 50% of the pods had edible peanuts in them. Anyway, after three hours of shelling, my hands had had enough. Buy or grow. For eight months of work, we gathered about seven to eight small packets of peanuts. There are still a few bushes left that need shelling, so let's round it up to say 10 packets. This works out to about one or two packets a month. Yes, during those months, there were torrential rains, floods, and an endless growth of weeds. But that is nature, right? Some might say that we would be better off buying the $1.20 packets from the supermarket and saving ourselves the trouble. Others might say that growing things yourself is a lot more satisfying. All in all, I had a fun time dealing with the peanuts, but I don't know if I will be doing it again next year. Try growing some peanuts yourself. It was a fun time, but growing enough food for your family takes a lot of work. If there were no supermarkets, most of our days would be spent growing, harvesting and searching for food. Although our mass food production system causes many environmental problems, without it, we wouldn't have the time to sit around and play computer games or write blogs.